Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. Three Alberinos in front of me today. Um, two of them from the place we normally associate uh, with Alberino, which is Rich Baixas in Galicia in, uh, in, in northwestern Spain. But the other is from... Maybe we'll come to that when we come to that. Although you've probably seen it on the title. Yeah, I've got a Californian one to finish, but... Uh, um, <sighs> Just set in. Uh, first one I have got uh, is Albanta, 100% uh, Alberino Rish Uh This is uh, unlike the next one. Actually, they're all 2013. No, the last one is 2012. But so the first two are 2013. Uh, let's just give this one a whirl. So on that quite exotic end of Alberino, I'm not sure what the alcohol is here, um, but it feels like it's got yeah rich nuttiness uh, in there with the um, uh, with, with the more typical citrus and peach, um, and it feels yeah feel like it's a 13% alcohol, and the next one is uh, 12 and a half. Maybe I should have done them the other way around, but yeah, this feels like on the to rich exotic almost viognier like uh, uh, peachiness rather than some of the more minerally restrained um, rich bashes, and uh, which I probably tend to prefer. This one feels like it's um, going to be quite a weighty, weighty wine. Let's see. And there is a little bit of stoniness that does come through when you, when you taste it, but it is really most, mostly about that uh, juicy, rich, a hint of lychee in there with those uh, exotic peach and very ripe pear flavours and maybe some passion fruit in there but it's yes it's it's upfront fruitiness uh, rather than maybe undercurrent of, um, of of more minerally things it's good uh, i see it's got a metal gold medal from the international wine challenge i think that's probably a little bit generous but um i like it uh, but um probably prefer something a little bit more restrained let's see whether this one is going to be a little bit more restrained this is torre de ermelo uh, Alvarino, Arish Baixas again, um, blah blah blah, let's just dig into it, half a percent less alcohol than the previous one, uh, see how it goes. And I, it's funny, I look at the shapes of the bottle, there's one that's sort of a slightly squatter burgundian and there's one that's a taller um, Bordeaux style. And um, yes, it feels, it's almost like they mirror the wines. The, the second one is a little bit more uh, slender and sleeker and uh, compared with the, the richness that you're getting in the first one. Um, it, still, it still smells very fruity. I mean, there's, there's lots of the, more on that, that peach, the, the nectarine rather than the uh, very ripe peach end. Um, and there is a little bit of nuttiness there I smell. Let's taste it and see uh, whether that sleekness continues. And I do get a little bit more stony character coming through there. Feels a little bit on, still on, the, uh, on, on, on that slightly simpler side. Um, there's a juiciness, there's um, this, uh, yeah, the citrus as, as, well, as well as the peach uh, and, and the nectarine. Uh, but yes, there just feels to be a little bit more soil character coming through here uh, compared with the, the previous one. It feels, yeah, a little bit more, hesitate to use the word minerally, because I think a lot of it will be to do with uh, a bit higher acidity and probably a little bit of, uh, of sulphur. But uh, um, yeah, there, there is a more a restraint here. Uh, so um, depending on which style you prefer, I mean, I, I, like, I like them both, uh, but I probably prefer this, uh, this, this one. Yeah, sleeker, slenderer. Let's see whether we get sleekness and slender on the Californian one, uh, which is 2012 Marimar Estate, uh, Don Miguel Vineyard uh, from the Russian River Valley. Uh, I think it's about the second vintage they've made of this, um, and um, let's give it a whirl. Now, I've had, I've, I've had a, a slightly troubled relationship with um, uh, the Marimar Torres wines, um, and uh, in, in, I've, I've liked some of the whites, uh, but the ones I've tended to like have been, uh, they, they do a, an unoaked Chardonnay called Acero, um, and this feels that it's more uh, built in that mould, that sleek, slender, maybe, I don't know whether they don't think they've gone through malolactic here, but uh, it, it seems to be about rich, um, about um, crispness and uh, sleekness rather than power and the buttery edge that I get in, in uh, a few of the Chardonnays. Uh, and I prefer it. I, 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 it's strange, at 14%, I, I, was, I was expecting something that was quite bold and in your face, but uh, the, the, there was the nice classic flavours. I mean, some of the, uh, the peach and uh, uh, peachy edge and the nuttiness of, of, the, of the previous two. But it feels, um, yeah, there's a, I don't know, it, 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 there's a bit of it that feels richer, but it still feels like there's going to have a, a willowy, slender edge there. And there's a floral character coming through as well, which I like. Well, I don't think I'd have put that at 14% alcohol. It feels feels more restrained than that. And uh, 
Uh, I like it. Yeah, I, I, I like that Christmas. I like it. It's one of those where it's got it's got full flavour but medium bodied rather than the other way around. And uh, it's got this slightly exotic peachy character, a bit of the nut kernel in there, uh, but the citrus restraint. And then there's something like the blossom going on in there. Um, Hyacinth. I don't know whether there's some something, some character like that, uh, but um, I mean, I, I think about it in 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 comparison with the, with some of the other wines from this estate, and uh, I think I like that as much as anything uh, any white wine I've had from them. It's um, it's really rather nice. So maybe uh, uh, sorry, Spain. Maybe I think tonight uh, I'll be digging into Marimar. See you soon.